Good morning and welcome again to the Daily Bible Study. And uh, we want to get right to our study this morning. And so we're going to be continuing our discussion of spiritual gifts. And we want to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. And the Apostle Paul says this. He says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another by faith, to a, that is, excuse me, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now let's notice for a moment verses 4 through 6. He says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. We see, he said, same Spirit, same Lord, same God. And so we have revealed here uh, a relationship uh, of spiritual gifts with the Trinity. Spiritual gifts are a part, and they began with uh, in the eternal counsel of the Godhead. And it may be correct to think of it in this way, that in eternity past, before we were ever born, God designed and determined what each one of us would be purposed for in his kingdom. Uh, we see this with Jeremiah, that before he was born, God had ordained that he would be a prophet. Okay, so God has determined before we were ever born what our design and purpose would be. But the kingdom of God is in Christ. Christ is the kingdom. He is the new covenant. So everything that God has purposed may only be realized and known in Christ. And then those who are in Christ are to seek and receive the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And so there we see. Uh, it may be understood in that way, the relation of spiritual gifts with the Trinity, with the Godhead. Uh, the Holy Spirit has not gone rogue. He's not operating on his own and manifesting in weird ways that is apart from the testimony and gospel of Christ uh, that is the expression of the eternal purpose of God and redemption of mankind, who he made and who was lost through sin in the garden and our own personal sin. In our lives, so all these weird manifestations and stuff that you see that do not bring people in, uh, into greater faith or greater expression of the purposes of the gospel in Jesus Christ, that's not the manifestation of the Spirit because the Spirit never operates separate from the gospel. He never operates separate from the truth of Christ and Him crucified, the purpose of the cross. The Holy Spirit has come to lead people into uh, uh, the guidance of the truth into Christ and the gospel, not weird manifestations. All this stuff you see, uh, uh, you know, the weird things, gold dust and angel feathers and gold teeth and all this kind of, uh, if I could just be blunt, stupidity that people present as though these were manifestations of the Holy Spirit. It's not. Most likely it's somebody with a chicken feather in their pocket and some glitter they bought at the dollar store and, uh, and, and, and you know, 
or some kind of thing like this. It is possible for Satan to counterfeit and work signs that are lying signs and wonders, the Bible says. So that's possible, but the Holy Spirit's not doing that kind of thing. He never has. You don't see it in the Bible, and he never will because his purpose is to lead people into the truth of Christ and the expression of the purposes of Christ. And, um, and so, anyway, he will not operate apart from the Trinity. All right, so the corporate life of the church is intended to produce a supernatural witness with its central testimony, as I said, uh, the crucified and risen Christ. And we are to proclaim the purchasing power of his crucifixion and give witness to the perpetual power of his resurrection. And from this emerges and, and, and it becomes apparent the purpose of spiritual gifts. That is to provide a spiritual capability beyond mere natural abilities and to provide equipping for a spiritual order of ministry within the church. So empowered with spiritual gifts, the church is equipped for ministry. Now, the manifestations of the Spirit bring people face to face with the reality of God. It gives the church the assurance that the Holy Spirit is with her and present as her source of power and guidance and that sin might not, indeed dare not, be ignored. Friend, it's hard to ignore sin in the presence of God. But it's easy to ignore it when there's no presence of God. Oh, men might stand and read the book and wax eloquent in natural ability, charisma, and education. But without the reality of the presence of God, men will ignore their sin. It's only as Isaiah said when he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the train of his robe was filling the temple with glory. And he saw his own sinfulness and said, Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of an unclean people. He saw his sin in the presence of God. And that's what we need in the church, so that men will see and know that God is in our midst. And knowing that God, that we'll see our sin. Amen. Amen. All right, well, i got to get focused on these spiritual gifts. Okay, so. We find in 1 Corinthians 12 what may be considered three groupings of gifts. One is the gifts of revelation, uh, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. And then there are the gifts of demonstration, the, gifts, the gift of faith, the gifts, plural, gifts of healing, the working of miracles. Then gifts of inspiration, a prophecy, diverse tongues, an interpretation of tongues. The first one standing at the head of this list is the word of wisdom. Uh, the gift of the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation of the divine purposes of God. It's a divine communication, a message from God to the church, given by the Holy Spirit through a believer. Now, of course, all things are to be judged to determine if it is from the Spirit, if it is genuinely from God. And having done that, then, in the gift of the word of wisdom, God gives forth a segment or a portion of information needed for the church to move in his direction. It has to do with the future, something unknown, how to walk and move ahead. It is wisdom concerning that which has not yet come to pass. It unveils a part of God's purpose and a particular wisdom needed to fulfill and walk in that purpose. Now, it must be understood that this is not a gift of wisdom that someone can possess. It is a word of wisdom, and whatever becomes known by that word is all that is known, both by the one speaking and to those that hear. When the Spirit gives to someone a word of wisdom, that person does not suddenly now know everything about God's will and his purpose in the future. They have only been used to speak forth the word that they were given. Also, this has nothing to do with a person's natural wisdom or knowledge. It doesn't matter if the person doesn't possess uh, education or natural 
uh, strength and intellectual ability. The person might not even possess the ability to spell the word dog. But if they are a consecrated, sanctified, and spirit-filled Christian, they may be used of God to speak the wisdom of God to the church because, you see, it is not God illuminating the wisdom of man. It is not God shining light on what man already possesses. No, it is the wisdom of God that comes through a person. They speak by the manifestation of the Spirit. Now, the word of knowledge, it can be given in the same manner as a tongue and interpretation. That is that the person may stand within the assembly and give the word of wisdom uh, as, that, as, as, as that that would be in order with the decency uh, of, of, of the Spirit. Paul said, let all things be done decently and in order. And in that way, the person may be given a word of knowledge and, and they may stand and give it in the assembly just as someone would stand and give a tongue and then someone would interpret. It may be given in that way. It may come forth in conjunction with preaching the word of God. Um, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that, they speak, that he speaks forth mysteries, the wisdom of God in a mystery as it had been before ordained in eternity. Um, and so a word of wisdom may come forth in conjunction with preaching. The preaching may preach prophetically uh, with wisdom from God concerning that which may come to pass. So it can work that way. It also may be given and spoken in conjunction with personal ministry, biblical counsel to an individual person or to a group of people or to numerous people. It can come forth in that way. Uh, no matter in which way it comes, it is always for the purpose of equipping God's people to move in His will and purpose. Wisdom needed concerning that, something that may happen, something that they will face, something uh, that they will be called upon to do, whatever it is. Uh, that's what wisdom is for. It is to make it is to give counsel concerning something that God makes known. Usually the word of wisdom will work in tandem with the word of knowledge that we'll talk about tomorrow. And, uh, uh, but it is fitting that the word of wisdom stand at the head of this list because the writer of Proverbs said that wisdom is the chief thing. Wisdom. Wisdom. And... Uh, and we need wisdom. We don't just need to understand what something means, but we need the wisdom to operate in it accordingly to God's will. And when the, and when the word of wisdom is genuine, know this, there will always be a sense of holiness and humility. It will not bring attention and bring glory to men, but it will bring glory to God because it will, uh, the church will have known that only the Holy Spirit could have spoken such things. And it will be spoken in an atmosphere of holiness and humility. The vessel will not be boastful and wanting to be seen. Recently in one of our services uh, in camp, during our camp meeting, we had a gentleman who was attending a visitor. And, uh, and during the altar service, he he. he tried to put himself in the center of all that was happening and, and take a microphone and speak, but I would not give him the microphone. Uh, he spoke briefly. But you see, it was not a manifestation of the Spirit. He gave a counterfeit tongue with a counterfeit interpretation because there was no sense of holiness there, and he sought to bring attention to himself. He wanted to be seen. He did not have a desire to make Christ known and real in the hearts of people. He wanted to be seen and, and puffed up so that men would think him spiritual and that him a possessor of something that others did not have. The Holy Spirit doesn't make us a possessor of something. He makes us a holy vessel meet for the Master's use. And when the gifts of the Spirit are in operation, there will be a sense of holiness. And men will be humble. They'll not be puffed up. They'll not think of themselves more highly than they ought to think. For they will know their unworthiness and the holiness and glory that God is. 
and men will be made low in his presence. Oh, I'm a man of unclean lips that dwells in the midst of an unclean people. And he'll know that it is God that has touched him with a coal from the altar. No, men won't be puffed up. They'll be made low. And so when it's genuine, there'll be that. And it will work to the edification of the church, moving her in God's will, giving her wisdom to walk in his way so that God's purpose can come to pass. And so, having said that, we should take to heart Paul's words and we should earnestly desire the best gifts because God desires it and Christ has purchased it and the church needs it. Amen. And so until next time, may God bless you, my friends.